Well, I think it's time we maple something again. So let's go grab my helper. Hey, teenager. What? Do you wanna go make some snickerdoodle bars with me? Yes. Let's go. Snickerdoodle bars are a family favorite, but we have not made them in quite a long time because the last time we made them and we used only pure maple syrup, it didn't come out quite the way that we wanted them to. Now, don't get me wrong. They came out tasting really, really good, but the consistency was a little bit off there because you make the snickerdoodle batter and you put half of it in the pan and then you put a layer of cinnamon and sugar and then you put the rest of your batter and then you top it with cinnamon and sugar. And doing it that way made it to where they were more of a like eat it with a spoon type of dessert, not a grab and go type of cookie bar. Good morning, little nugget bubba girl. We love you. <laughs> I think she's tired of being the internet's favorite kitten cat. <laughs> Anyway, now that we are in Texas and I have more resources available to myself, I got some maple sugar, which is just boiled down maple syrup for all the liquid to be out of it, and it hardens up, and then you crush it all up into sugar, but I didn't want to take all that extra time and stuff. So we're going to make the batter using pure maple syrup like we do in all of our Can It Maple series, and then we're going to use the maple sugar for the in-between sprinkling. So let's go make it together. Get your oven preheating to 350 degrees. Here's your recipe if you want to take a quick screenshot. Just never mind how dirty this paper is. It is old. We've been making these things for years now. But remember, this is the Can It Maple series. So we're not using refined sugar here. We are going to be using pure maple syrup or maple sugar for all of the other sugar content. So the recipe calls for one and a quarter cup of white sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. So you're going to replace that with one and three fourths cup of pure maple syrup. Let's go make it. Since we start with our liquid ingredients in the bowl first, let's go with one and three fourths cup of pure maple syrup to start with. And for those asking about, does the liquid maple syrup change consistency compared to using refined white sugar? Remember in baking that sugar, whether it be white sugar or brown sugar, is considered a liquid ingredient because when you add heat to sugar, it turns into a liquid. So no, using a one-to-one -one ratio of using the maple syrup to replace the refined sugar is just fine. Let's keep going. Now you're gonna add in 3 fourths cup of softened butter. Now we're gonna add in three eggs. One teaspoon of vanilla, and then you're gonna mix all this together. Now we're gonna toss in our dry ingredients. We're gonna do two and one third cup of flour. One and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. and half a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna give that a final mix together. Now you're gonna put half of this batter into that pan. Now, on top of this first layer, you're gonna put a mixture of maple sugar and cinnamon. How much, you might ask? Well, the recipe says one tablespoon of sugar and one tablespoon of cinnamon. But again, just like with the chocolate chip cookies, what kind of psychopath actually measures that out? Put it on there as much as you want, let's go. Okay, so we're mixing together our cinnamon and our maple sugar here. And now you're gonna sprinkle it all over the bottom layer of the batter that you've got in your pan already. That's good. Now you're gonna add the rest of your batter on top of this. The top layer never goes on smoothly, regardless if you're using pure maple syrup or sugar, you just kind of spread it around there. This will all spread as it bakes. And then you repeat the previous step and sprinkle more cinnamon and sugar on there. We need to make some more cinnamon and sugar. Hold on, be right back. Much better. Stick that in the oven for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna get asked if I have maple sugar, why not just use that for the entire recipe instead of using maple syrup in the batter and maple sugar for the in-between. One, we always have maple syrup on hand. You can easily just run to any grocery store on the aisle where they have their honey and their like pancake syrup and things like that. There's pure maple syrup there. Maple sugar, on the other hand, I had to special order from Amazon in order to get here. Two, 
Again, we always have maple syrup on hand and we use a lot of it just on daily living. So using it in baking is not a big deal. Maple sugar on the other hand is fairly expensive. I paid like $80 for that one container of maple sugar. So I did buy it to have it for specific uses when I needed specific textures. So when it comes to the overall baking of things, like I'm putting it into the batter itself, it doesn't matter the texture whether it's actually sugar form or if it is liquid form because when it bakes it's going to turn into a liquid. So in essence when it comes to time and availability and resources and cost it's more cost effective and more effective overall for availability for me to use the maple syrup in the actual baking and save the maple sugar for specific needs only. Like when we are making snickerdoodle bars and we want that crystallized crunchy in the middle and on top. That's where you would want to use the actual sugar and not the syrup. And I've also figured out that I can make my own confectioner sugar using my Ninja Food Blender and that maple sugar. So that opens up the whole world of icing without refined sugar. So that'll be another episode. But for now, we have officially mapled snickerdoodle bars and this time they came out perfect.